Okay, now in part D, since we know the functions one to one, there's an inverse, and we're trying to find a formula for the inverse. So the strategy we had back in chapter five is we would write y equals f of x. We'd switch x and y. And then we would solve the equation x equals f of y for y. Well, that's not going to cut it here in 6-1 because we haven't talked about solving exponential equations yet. So we're going to go back and look at things from a procedural point of view. So what's the procedure for the function f? What's it do? The first thing it does is it takes the input x, multiplies it by negative 1. Once it does that, it takes that result and adds 1. Then it puts that into the function 2 to the x, so it makes it the exponent on 2. Then it multiplies that by negative 1. And then it adds 5. So what's the procedure for the inverse going to be? Well, I'm going to reverse each step, and I'm going to reverse the order in which I do it. So once again, think of putting on socks, then putting on shoes. To reverse that process, you're going to take off the shoes and then take off the socks. So for the inverse, what's it going to look like? Well, instead of adding 5, I'm going to subtract 5. Multi instead of multiplying by negative 1, I'm going to divide by negative 1. What's the opposite of making it the exponent on 2? Well, that's taking log base 2. Instead of adding 1, I'm going to subtract 1. Instead of multiplying by negative 1, I'm going to divide by negative 1. So let's construct the formula then for the inverse. So subtract 5. So I'm going to take my input x, subtract 5. I'm going to divide that result by negative 1. I'm going to take log base 2 of it. Then I'm going to subtract 1. Then I'm going to divide that by negative 1. So there's some simplification to do. Uh, I'm working on the outside here to simplify. Dividing by negative 1. I could divide this by negative 1, divide that by negative 1. I'm going to get 1 minus log base 2 of, and then the same thing happens in here. Dividing by the negative 1 is going to reverse that subtraction. So I claim that this, in fact, uh, is the inverse function. Okay, so how do I check it out? We're going to check it out using function composition. Okay, so let's check using function composition. So if uh, these really are inverses, when I plug them into each other, I should just get back my original input x. So let's start this way. I want f inverse of f of x. So that's f inverse of 5 minus 2 to the minus x plus 1. All right, so that means everywhere I see an x in my formula for the inverse, which is only at one place. I have to replace it with that expression. So anytime you replace things in algebra, it's best to do it using parentheses so you're going to avoid some common mistakes. So I'll give myself some room here. Okay, so I want 1 minus log base 2 of 5 minus this thing. So it's 1 minus log base 2 of 5 minus 5 is 0, and then that distributing that negative through makes that a positive 2 to minus x plus 1. 
Now, log base 2 and the exponential base 2 are inverses of each other. So by definition, I get 1 minus the quantity, negative x plus 1. Distributing that subtraction through, I, I'm subtracting the opposite of x. That just gives me x. I have 1 minus positive 1, which gives me 0. And sure enough, I just have x. Now, we need to check that this is valid for everything in the domain of the function f. We mentioned the domain of the function f was all real numbers, and this will work for all real numbers. Okay, now we check the other way. Let's look at f composed with f inverse. So this would be f of f inverse of x which would be f of 1 minus log base 2 of 5 minus x. And so this is where we're going to have some domain issues here, potentially, because when, you know, when I substitute this in, the domain of the f inverse, well, the f 5 minus x has to be bigger than 0 for the log to make sense which means 5 has to be bigger than x, or in other words, x has to be less than 5. So this is minus infinity to 5. Now, once again, this is the range of the original function, so the fact that the domains in the range are matching up is good, but we need to make sure that everything we do from this point on is valid for x is less than 5. So let's toss this in then to the formula I have for f of x. Once again, I'm going to give myself some room. Everywhere I see an x in the formula for f, so up there in the exponent, I've got to substitute in that e expression. So it's 5 minus 2 to the negative quantity, 1 minus log base 2 of 5 minus x, and then plus 1. Now I simplify. This is 5 minus 2 to the negative 1 plus log base 2 of 5 minus x plus 1. The negative 1 and the positive 1 cancel each other out, and I get 5 minus 2 to the log base 2 of 5 minus x. So once again, by definition, the exponential function 2 to the x and the logarithm base 2 are inverse functions. So these undo each other, and I'm just left with 5 minus the quantity 5 minus x. Distributing the negative through, sure enough, I get x, same as before. So we double check to see if there's anything I'm doing that wouldn't work for x less than 5, and we see the only restriction at this point is the logarithm, which I've already taken care of. All right? So we've checked our answer using function composition. That'll do it for Checkpoint Quiz 6.1.